Making his return, guys, please give it up for my friend and yours, Jesus Christ! Thank you. Nice. Good spot to have that. I love you. I love you. I love all of you. You know this. Good to be back again. I said I would. Yeah, don't, uh, don't look too surprised. This is only like the third craziest thing of 2020. And, uh... I know it's been 2020 years since I've been here, but uh, customs is crazy. I can already see some of you are looking at me like the Romans did. It's, uh, I can read your minds. Listen, not, not funny, not funny, blasphemous, sacrilege, nice hair, thank you. I also know I, I don't exactly look exactly like Jesus did uh, the first time. This is, but you gotta understand, you know, God updates me to look like whatever market he puts me in. So this is, you know, a, a bit of a newer model. You know, I mean, if, if I came back and I looked like OG Jesus, I don't even know if I'd be allowed in here. Yeah, if I came back looking like Model 1 Jesus, I'd probably just get killed again. Hands up, don't shoot! It goes right through the head. <laughs> if you don't know who I am, I died for your sins. Uh, pretty good deal on your end, I think. Uh, everyone has their sins resolved. I get nailed to a cross and die. Pretty one-sided, if you ask me. But, uh, you know, God works in mysterious ways. He called an audible. He talked to me and he said, you know, the whole following thing isn't exactly working, so we're gonna have to go with a radical act. And I'm gonna make a loophole where everyone can get in through heaven through your crucifixion. And I was like, okay. Uh, wouldn't have been my first idea. But, you know, you're the boss. You're me. I'm you. I don't know. So we're doing, we're doing our thing. Yeah, that whole thing was pretty, uh, you know, pretty rough. The crown of thorns, that was an interesting thing they did. You know, crown of thorns, I don't know, that just seemed like a lot of work to go through for like an ironic gag, you know? They were like, oh, king of the Jews, huh? Hey, Frankie, make him a crown of thorns. And the guy's like, I've never made a crown of thorns before. And they're like, well, you're the only art major, so you're gonna do it. And uh, yeah, this guy made a crown of thorns and uh, he was pretty proud of it. Too. It was pretty wild. Like they were kicking me through the streets and it would fall off my head. And he's like, hey man, I worked hard on that. Don't let that fall off. Here's how bad it was. They took it off me before they crucified me up on the cross and then placed it gently back on top of my head like a star on a Christmas tree. Just right. There we go. Yeah, so that's a little bit about me. I don't even know if I would uh, do it again at this point. I don't know, it's just, it's, things are different now, you know? Honestly, when I died for your sins the first time, there wasn't that much to live for anyway. You know, like, if you asked me to do it again, you'd be like, Jesus, we need you to die for our sins. I'd be like, screw that, I got an Apple Watch. I'm not <laughs> dying for you guys. Also, I didn't know what you thought Jesus Christ is doing stand-up was gonna be like, but this is it. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if he thought it was going to be more old school. It was like, West Bank? More like Worst Bank. <laughs> People ask, what would Jesus do all the time? You know, what would Jesus do? Uh, you know, as if there's not an entire book on exactly what I would do. Uh, it's pretty popular. What would Jesus do? Literally this. This is what Jesus would do right now. He would stand somewhere in public and, you know, try to gather everybody up and tell them that he was Jesus. You'd be surprised how few people actually seem to care him back. Really? I've, oh, yeah. I've been going around town trying to talk to people and telling people that I'm going to be performing a stand-up routine with a positive message. Do they just think you're crazy? Yeah. People just kind of walk by. They go, yeah, whatever. Maybe we'll check it out. Nobody, uh, nobody really seems to Man, care. It sounds like so you're barking a comedy show on it, the street. It really like is. Crazy. I mean, yeah, it's surprising. I've been gone for 2,020 years. You think people would be a little more enthusiastic. But for real. I mean, it's a shame. People uh, don't seem to care too much. If I use antibacterial soap, is it really genocide? No. So, so what have you been doing besides, are you just like wandering the streets talking to well, people? Did you get a job? I mean, what are you doing? Well, I'm down here to perform stand up. Okay. Yeah. God sent me down because he wants me to give a gospel, do, do his word. But 
because we're in 2020, things have changed. Uh, people's attention span is different. What people pay attention to is different. So God decided uh, the most effective way to get out his message would be through stand-up comedy because people don't listen to messages unless it's entertaining. Yeah, so anyways, why am I here, right? How did this, how did this happen? What am I doing here? To explain that, why, why Jesus came back today on 2020, uh, it makes sense when you look at the relationship of humanity in regards to God. Let's look at the first two people. Adam. Nice strong name. There's been millions of Adams since. Eve. Maybe three Eves since. Not his popular name. I don't know. She was a dancer or something. But uh, yeah, first two people. Only rule. Don't eat the apples. We ate the apples. God got pissed. Kicked us out of bush gardens. Was... Adam was like, hey, you know, that was her idea. I mean, honestly, I don't really need her. I figured out how to do it with my hand. And God was like, you know, well, I gave you domain over everything. And Eve was like, are you just going to let him talk to me like this? You're, you're spineless. And Adam was like, well, I'm ribless. I know that. Uh, so, so humanity got kicked out of Eden. And uh, then we were just forced to roam for a while. And God went from being a helicopter parent who gave us everything we could ever want. You know, he was like, we have food, beautiful trees, animals. We made a, a duck face with a beaver body. Whatever you want, man, we can give you everything. So God went from this helicopter parent who loved us and focused on everything we do to an absentee father. He disappeared for a while. He went to ride a motorcycle or something. So God, God disappeared. So time passes and then God checks back on humanity. And he goes, oh my me, he goes, you're all, you're all still terrible, you're all still terrible people. Well, uh, here's what I noticed, Noah seems to have things together in a world where uh, nobody seems to have anything going right. How about this, he'll be like your step god. You don't have to call him god, just, you know, we're, he'll, he'll put it together, we're going to reboot the system, we're going to start it over. So, you know, so god washed the whole earth and we tried again. And, you know, some people that hear that story and they go, you know, if God's all powerful, why didn't he just make a whole nother earth with more people again? It's like, well, yeah, he could have done that, but I mean, he worked really hard on this one. You know, you don't just throw something out because, he, he, you know, you don't just make another kid because you don't like your first kid, right? You, just, you can work on it, you know, you try it again. So, so God washed it out and uh, Noah started again, time passed again, and then God checked back up on humanity and he went, oh, wow. Uh, you guys still aren't getting it. He goes, you guys still suck. He goes, how about this? I'll come down as one of you, and then I'll show you how to live as humans. And then God made me. And then, as I so fabulously explained, I was crucified. And ever since that moment, God has viewed humanity like a mentally ill child. And he would visit us once a week in the hospital every Sunday. He'd come in, and we'd be facing the window, and he'd go, hey, humanity. You guys doing good? Everything going well? And humanity goes, yeah, everything's great, but there's an election coming up and people aren't wearing masks and there's a new episode of the Kardashians and I got a virus on my computer. And God's like, okay, sure, what, you know, whatever's going on. I told you that Jesus would come back one day, but I can't bring him back until he feels safe. So every week, God comes out of the mental hospital and I'm sitting in the car and God just sees me and nods his head and goes, not today. Not today. <laughs> but guess what? Today, we're here, yeah! Jesus is back today, yeah! I've finally come back, and I came back due to a, yeah, thank you, due to a, another one of God's famous loopholes. See, what happened was, for the first time in history, a hundred million people all prayed at the same time. And that had never been done before, so God said, you know what, achievement unlocked, Jesus is back, let's get him back in there. And uh, I know you might be thinking, you know, there's been religious ceremonies throughout the history of humanity. I'm sure there must have been at least one time where a hundred million people have all prayed at the same time. But uh, you'd be surprised how many people are just resting their eyes. Yes, yeah, so they're not always talking to us. Sometimes people are just tired. It's been very good as far as people's response. I did one uh, packed Friday night room comedy club. And it did not go well. Yeah, some people don't even believe in me. Some people think I was just a pair of really clever twins who had to play a tough game of rock, paper, scissors. Mm. Come on, two out of three. No, you go. All right, fine. Yeah. To be fair, I've never done stand-up before as Jesus, so <laughs> this is kind of about what I expected. <laughs> 
Who would have thought Jesus would come back and bomb? <laughs> Never would you have thought, he could just stay up there. We didn't, you could have just sent us a text or something. Have you encountered any members of the clergy? Any, any, yes. And ha how have they I reacted actually, to uh, Jesus coming? I, I, I figured they'd be losing their fucking minds. I ran into a street preacher with his team the other day. Thou shalt not commit murder. I heard you were talking about my dad and me. You're a joke. You're a joke. I'm a joke. Thou shalt not you guys are shaming murder. people. What is the greatest commandment? The greatest commandment? Yeah. Well, that's hard to decide which one's the best. See, the Jesus of Scripture, who is not you, you guys are being mean. You blaspheme the name of God, and the, you should that's repent. What, that's what the Romans said. said. If you spoke nicer, you're yelling at people. That's okay. not effective. Okay, what is the gospel? You, you don't can't, even know who God is. is. Sure I do. I feel it oh, all the no, time. God is not a being. Yes, it is. No, God is not a being. You can't definitively God tell God, me what God, God is. But we do know who God is. But then how come nobody's here with him then? But what do you think people would listen to more? This or someone who's trying to... Right. Yes, it does. God's word right, no is problem. offensive. Okay, wait, yes, no, wait, wait, it's not offensive. Yes, but you God's guys are word yet. is It's not offensive. No, Why would God's word be offensive? God is holy and he is perfect Yes, of course. Of course. I agree. I agree. But then now you're contradicting. Hey, Why? So, because so you, you said, said God, is a, God is a feeling. It God is, is a sentient. No, he's not. He's a sentient being. It, it's all of them. We are made the in Holy his image. Yeah, but the Holy Ghost we exists too. We are made in his image. We are yeah, made yeah, in yeah I, I agree. I agree. He's, he's being mean. Your intention he's being rude. Your intention no, he's not. Yes, it is. Not. Well, listen to his tone of voice. It's very rude. He shot. He said He said people dressing gangster and women should be ashamed of themselves. Yes, he did. Women, like nowadays, are like just... Out there, right? I was one of them. I was one of them that I thought that that was normal. Yeah. Why? Because I was sexualized at an early age, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So unless there's a standard for how we should live, people are just going to live the way they want to live. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You shall be caught and carried by the wings of an eagle. But uh, yeah, super cool to be back so I can talk to you a little bit about, you know, what we can do at this point. And, uh, you know, I know that doesn't sound too exciting for Jesus to just come back and talk. But, you know, if you've read the stories and, uh, you know, most of those are like, then we spent 10 days in the desert listening to him talk. So I think we can handle a few more minutes of this. You know, I know that you'd, you'd love to see some miracles. That'd be pretty exciting. And I wish I could do some, uh, some miracles for you guys. But uh, things have actually gotten stricter on uh, what we can get away with. Uh, you'd be surprised. The devil has a great legal team. So they've kind of pulled back what we're able to do. Yeah, we, uh, we saved one woman from getting hit by a train, and 15 years later she robbed a bank, and we've never heard the end of it. So we've got to be pretty careful with our uh, divine intervention at this point. But yeah, I can tell you, uh, you know, some, some tips, some advice on you know, how to, how to live the best life you can in this time, in this moment. First off, keep praying. Keep praying. We like the praying. We enjoy that. It's a good thing. And uh, also, with the praying, it's not, it's not just, you know, to talk to us. It's not about us. We're, we're really just tricking you into manifesting things. You know, yeah, by saying things out loud, you know, it helps move the wheel. So it's good to, you know, just keep doing that. And also, uh, with the praying, um, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe consider us sometimes you know like uh because I, I mean you believe we're listening but not one time anybody's ever like dear god how are you doing dear jesus what's on your plate today it's been cool to try to you know weave in positive undertones to uh you know silliness but also trying to inform people and educate at the same time amen you know that helps it do, you know doesn't 100 percent matter if you say amen, you know, it's not like you've been writing emails your whole life and not hitting send, and then you say amen and flood the inbox. Doesn't matter. Helps if you want. Amen's cool. What True. would be the final message, the ultimate message to give to the people? Just be decent. That's, uh, that's you know, that's about it. Yeah, be, be decent. It's, it's not too hard. You know, that, that phrase, love thy neighbor, seems kind of intimidating, but, you know, love is like a general term. You know, like a Christmas card every now and then is good. That's nice. You know, but when I say be decent, what I mean is like, you know, if your dog goes to the bathroom on somebody's lawn, pick it up. You know, that's pretty good. Don't rev your engine at 3 a.m. in the city neighborhood. Don't do that. And, you know, just put your shopping cart back. Just put your cart back. It's that easy. And the thing is, I can understand it's hard to be decent when you don't feel decent. 
So, you know, a good way to feel decent, exercise, food, water, sunlight. It's really that easy. The truth is boring, you know? It's not, there's not much money behind the honesty, really. Yeah, just, you know, be, be decent, be good. Uh, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, you know, moderation, balance. It's, it's everything we've, we've said th literally through eternity. It's, uh, you know, you don't have to listen to the, the guys on TV. It's, uh, you know, what you're doing right now is pretty great. Try to sell you stuff. Oh, you need this backpack. You need this Gucci dog leash. No, you need like three things. A lot of them are free. So yeah, just be decent people. Just be good people. Heaven could be this, huh? I mean, I know some people would think that's a bit of a rip off, but uh, yeah. I back. think it's a good thing that you're back trying to spread the word of, uh, you know, taking care of each other and being kind to each other. It's one thing that this, this planet is lacking right now is people being kind to each other. Do There's, you have any ideas how I could be more effective? You don't want my answer. No, why no. not? My answer is wipe the fucking thing clean and start from scratch. See, that was the whole like loophole of me getting crucified for your guys' sins. It's like when the school lowers the test scores so people can graduate. That's what it's like. Because everybody was so bad, God was just tired of sending people to hell. He had nobody to hang out with. Yeah, I was basically like the first club promoter, really. Yeah, just, I died for your cover charge, you know? Just, <laughs> just, just say my name up there. My dad will let you in. We yeah. love you. We love you too. All of you. Yeah. Everybody. We love all of you. Even if you're bad, we still love you. We, we want to help you. I you. Meet your bad ways. With, with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. What is the Holy Ghost? To explain to you all what the Holy Ghost is, I can do that best by playing the intro theme song to Three's Company. Thank you so much, everybody. You've been wonderful. Thank you. God bless you. Have a good day.